uh, for the Army, there's a uh, there's a, a large, I guess, suite of uh, equipment. So starting from vehicles, probably, which uh, if you come down to the expo, you can probably see a few of them. There's some behind us now. Um, uh, for a lot of the weapons as well, uh, the communication systems, so radios, uh, that's probably the main ones that I think on the Army standpoint, but we've also got, yeah, so when I say vehicles, I'm talking about land and air, and also uh, a small sea component as well for, for you know, close to shore sort of operations. But uh, you, you'll, you'll see them all at various areas of um, Army engineering. You'll, uh, you'll be around and uh, manage and um, also assist with design or acquisition of, of all these sorts of equipment. Uh, I guess technically from a, an Air Force point of view, besides the aircraft themselves, uh, there is a vast range of uh, test equipment to make sure all the various uh, airframes are performing as they should and to be able to test all the uh, particular systems and then of course all the ground support equipment uh, that helps through maintenance etc. Uh, so right, sure, we've got the platforms themselves but there is a, a wealth of background logistics and equipment which helps us to maintain those aircraft. For Navy, everyone thinks ships, which is definitely a big, a big part of Navy. For myself, aviation engineer, um, we have helicopters in the Navy for our aviation aircraft, but one part where they interact is actually where uh, the helicopter lands on the ship. So we have a lot of facilities that assist in the helicopter ship interface. So there's technology in, in that space. Um, but a lot of other things as well is where you might be able to get outside of the hands-on engineering and go back to the academic side and do further study with new or emerging technology. I think it's actually a, a very good entry pathway. It gets a diversity of education into the ADF, um, which ADFA has excellent aspects to it. But getting people from different universities means that people have been taught differently, people have different perspective, perspectives, and it's diversity of thought, which is a great thing to have. Different teachers. Different teachers, different people that you can lean on later when you become an alumni, um, at, when you graduate. And there's the Defence Undergraduate Scheme, so they'll sponsor for up to three years and you can have, after you've studied for one year of a four-year degree, you can join the military and be sponsored for three years where you get a salary, you get the benefits of being in the ADF, uh, which includes uh, housing assistance and medical and you get to do Anzac Days and um, you also get to remain in your current location uh, if you, you know, you can change degrees if you, uh, if that's the way that you're going. Uh, so there's, there's a definitely a varied uh, range of opportunities for someone who is currently studying in a degree but still fancies uh, a defence role later on after they finish. You do change your job roles uh, quite often throughout your career and so a lot of it is always new and there's always a requirement to learn quickly so you can actually perform in your role and then you know your boss and the actual rest of the team can benefit from your knowledge. So right now I uh, am working in a technical role where I have to be familiar with a lot of international and Australian standards uh, for a lot of different aspects uh, for what uh, Army wants in the equipment that we're providing. So I've got to make sure that I'm familiar with them all so I can double check when uh, industry provide us solutions to what we've asked them to provide that they meet Australian and, and international standards and that's a lot of reading. Uh, and becoming familiar and then being able to apply that knowledge to, to the, uh, the documentation and the general uh, packages that we're provided uh, in terms of, so yeah, it is a big part of it. And that would be service-wide? Yeah, defence uh, in particular, I know from an Air Force point of view, ongoing professional development is, uh, is considered uh, very important. Uh, and they're always looking to, to further you and that, you see that through the job rotation and the various jobs that we get to do through our career. Uh, but yeah, in terms of courses and further study, uh, lots of avenues to continue to enhance you as a person and as a capability for defence. Have you had any opportunities to take further studies um, in your careers to date? Yeah, I think... Big I think smiles we, <laughs> no, I think uh, we're all probably going to say something similar. But yeah, I, I was, uh, and probably saw that in the video, that I was given the opportunity to study a Masters uh, overseas. So I lived in the UK for... Uh, for 12 months um, where I went to the Defence Academy of the United Kingdom uh, in Trivenham and I got to study uh, a Masters which was sponsored by Defence um, to gain knowledge in a particular area that they were interested in, in their personnel to have uh, which was um, military electronic systems engineering so that gave me knowledge in radar, uh, communications, electronic warfare, um, electro-optics uh, which is something that I, uh, communications especially, it's something that I apply in my current role. And how long were you over there for? Yeah, so 12 months I was over there for, so yeah, it was good. Yeah, I got to take my family as well, which I, I do mention, and uh, yeah, so we had a great time uh, together, just experiencing a new country. We got to uh, definitely uh, 
deal with uh, like a foreign military as well a lot, which is interesting to see how they do things. And mm. uh, yeah, it, and I'm sure we will have reasonably sim similar stories about uh, yeah how enjoyable it can be. You know, there's certainly opportunities in, in Air Force for us to uh, undertake uh, various master's programs overseas, be it a, a software focus or a, a systems focus, uh, or even as a, a flight test engineer. I've seen some of my colleagues uh, go that through that program in the United States. Um, but I've really enjoyed some of the other smaller courses that Defence offers, uh, both locally and, and, and with industry. Uh, for example, um, electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic control courses, which has become an interest of mine. I've got to do some, some training and some courseware in regards to that, which I've found quite fascinating. So can you tell me about the training specifics of electrical engineering? Uh, yep. So. Uh, it's a standard four-year engineering degree, so you'll start off with um, your, your maths and your sciences. It's probably not too dissimilar what you'll go through uh, in year 12, so I found that uh, it's, a, it's a good baseline. So you get students from all over Australia, um, and there are sometimes nuances in people's uh, education, so it's a good baseline in your first year to kind of make sure everyone's uh, on the same level at maths, on the same level in their sciences. Um, but then there's also specialist subjects for electrical engineering, so that went into uh, so for me, design of electronic circuits, so understanding um, electrical theory, you know, where, you know, I guess V equals IR, just the standard equations that you're going to be uh, probably applying for the rest of your degree. Um, also, with electrical engineering, um, there's a strong um, presence of, of computer programming as well, so you'll be familiarising yourself with uh, several computer languages, so Java, C++, Python. Um, so that's, uh, which I probably didn't mention previously, but that's probably a good thing to uh, be interested in in school as well uh, before coming into electrical engineering. I think I agree with that. I, I hadn't done any software or coding uh, before entering in, into my degree, and that was certainly a, an interesting experience for me. But, uh, you know, you, you learn it and pick it up. I learned Java, and that helped me with other software courses and, and applications like MATLAB, I think, which yep. was used quite heavily. Yeah, um, but yeah, a fascinating component of the degree. You know, as a defence individual, sure, there are times that we have to do what we probably call overtime, um, but that it is made up. Uh, your supervisor, your chain, acknowledges that, and you're provided the appropriate amount of leave uh, in response. And I guess it's important to look after your people. You, you don't want to, uh, uh, to to run them out, um, otherwise, you know, you can you can lose that capability. So uh, yeah, it's definitely acknowledged. I definitely agree. So like I myself, I still play um, I still play AFL. So I, I've joined a local footy club. Um, out near where, like here in Victoria, where, where I currently live, and uh, I also play in a band. I play bagpipes, so I, you know I, I can still commit to the things that I, I really do enjoy. And uh, most of the time, like I can, you know, go away on the weekends, you know, go rock climbing, or you know, do, do a myriad of other activities that, that do interest me. There are times I think that Warwick mentioned that you will, you you know, will be away for courses or for work or for exercises or even operational deployments where you might be away for weeks or months at a time. Um, but you know. That is a sacrifice, but um, you've also, in the off time or in the time in between, you, you do get plenty of time to uh, pursue the, the things that you, you enjoy most, which uh, you know, I definitely get the chance to. Your attitude and, and your approach to not only your studies, but your future career, those around you, uh, it makes a big difference. You have to be driven, uh, you have to be motivated, you've got to find out what motivates you um, from a defence perspective or an academic perspective uh, and, and really harness that. Uh, and a little bit of emotional intelligence certainly goes a long way. Um, and uh, with, the, with the right attitude, I think uh, there, there's no challenges that, that, that can't be grasped or solved. Definitely want to echo the, um, you know, ask for help if, you're, mm. if you need it. There's in aspects within the degree, within further education, after you finish your degree in the um, areas that you'll be posted to in jobs but also you know the physical aspect we have uh, p uh, personal trainers throughout the military in the navy army air force and in my experience they've all been amazing if you are you know if you want to work on a cardio aspect or a strength aspect they they've always been amazing and happy to help um, and push you that little bit harder than you might be able to push yourself so it's, it's you know in the terms of facilities that you've got access to there's always a gym on base the PTIs have uh, always been happy to help with getting you to whatever fitness goal it is that you're trying to achieve. And there's peers who are always happy to assist you with discussing engineering aspects, which I'm finding my current posting surrounded by engineers for the first time ever. <laughs> we'll find some very interesting engineering conversations going on. 
you, you need to know what you're getting yourself into, sure. So no uh, kind of, you know, you, you've got to demonstrate that you understand that you're joining the military, you're joining an organisation that, you know, expects this, this and this and has this. But don't go in there saying, I know everything I need to know. Uh, you know, there's nothing more that you can teach me because that's obviously you're going to be, that's going to be seen through. Um, you've got a lot of years, at that, especially at ADFA, you've got a lot of years to, for the Defence Force to develop you into what they need you to have and there's a lot of training that you're going to um, be given. So going in there with a mind of, uh, like, this is what I do know, I don't know this, I'm, you know, and I'm excited to learn about it. And I think that's going to be put you in good stead when uh, applying to join the Defence Force.